everyone! This video goes live on Valentine's Day and I thought I would lean heavily into the love theme and talk about something that's interested me for a while. Love languages. Je t'aime. Ich liebe dich. Not like that. The concept of love languages first appeared in a 1992 book by Gary Chapman, who outlined five general ways that romantic partners like to express and receive love. But I believe that all forms of love are important, and I also believe that the way that you feel most comfortable giving love to someone or receiving love from someone is probably going to be the same, whether you're giving and receiving that love to a romantic partner, a friend, or a family member. I like to think that I'm relatively fluent in all five of the love languages, but there are two that I feel most closely inclined to label myself as. I know you're supposed to pick one that you most closely identify with, but I just can't. So, you know, I have two. So what are the five love languages? Let's find out. Number one on the list is one of the two that I like the best. Words of affirmation. This ranges from the obvious, actually saying I love you to someone and enjoying hearing that back, to things like gentle encouragement and compliments and even just regular messages on social media. I wear my heart on my sleeve and I think this is partly why this is one of the two love languages I identify with the most because I just can't help it if I care about someone that much I feel the need to gush over them. I can't help but tell them how clever they are or how beautiful they are or how funny they are or how much they mean to me because I really like hearing all that stuff back too. I guess if you want me to be personal, it probably stems from me not having a very high amount of self-esteem and I need to hear good things about myself because my brain likes to say bad things about me a lot. So when someone says, I love you, or Emma, you're doing a really good job, or you look really nice today, or just something complimentary or affectionate, it means a lot to me. And because it means a lot to me to hear that stuff, I also want to make other people feel that warm, fuzzy glow that I get when I receive a really lovely compliment or someone says I love you, so I say it back. I think this is a fairly common love language for people to crave or to use. I mean, everybody wants to be told they're loved, right? I love you. Aww, that's nice. No, no, I really love you. Thanks. Oh my god. love language is quality time. Again, this is something that I think most of us feel a need for from time to time. Just having somebody who wants to hang out with us with no distractions and, and it be just the two of you. And real quality time involves looking somebody in the eye when you're talking to them and really listening attentively to what that other person is saying. Not being distracted by something else while they're trying to tell you something. And again, there's nothing groundbreaking or mind-blowing about any of this stuff. I mean, nobody wants to think that the person they want to spend time with and talk to is more interested in something else. I thought we could get a takeaway for dinner tonight. Yeah, sure, what else? It's just that, you know, I've had a really stressful week at work and I, I haven't really mentioned it, but I've really been going through it. So I feel like I need something nice to cheer myself up with. Oh, yeah, whatever you want. Uh, Indian, maybe. Okay, well, you know, I just, you know, I'm really stressed. So I just feel like I need a treat. <laughs> oh my God, Jason has just posted a photo of his new trainers. They are so awesome. What a legend! <laughs> What? Quality time can also mean trying something for the first time together, or sharing your hobbies with one another, or visiting new places together. And for all of those reasons, not only is it a nice way of showing your love, but it sounds pretty good fun too. 
What's not to like? Number three is acts of service. And this is the love language for people who believe that actions speak louder than words. And in fairness, let's be honest, all the I love yous in the world count for absolutely nothing if the person saying it doesn't back those words up with the way they behave. The acts of service that this love language refer to can range from something as simple as bringing somebody a cup of tea when they've been working really hard on something and they seem a bit stressed or tired, to actively doing everything you can to help them solve a problem that they're currently facing. It can be as simple as if you happen to work with the person you care about, offering to cover one of their shifts if they're not feeling very well, to something as major as... I just don't feel a hundred percent. Do you need me to donate one of my kidneys to you? Because I will do that! Essentially, if your primary love language is acts of service, it means that not only do you want to do everything you can to make life easier for the person you love, but you also want to feel appreciated by knowing that the person you care about is going to do those little things, and sometimes those big things, to help you out too. love language is pretty self-explanatory, it's just gifts. If this is your primary love language, it doesn't mean that you're trying to buy someone's affections or that you only care about the materialistic side of any relationship. It means that you're someone who puts a lot of time and thought into finding the perfect gift for somebody and you feel really loved and appreciated when someone does the same in return. That gift could be something that you have handmade for someone you care about. You want to put that time and effort and show them, I've spent all this time creating this thing for you because I care about you and I want to do these nice things for you. And it's the same when you get it in return. You think, oh my goodness, they, they spent all this time creating something for me. And if it's a bought gift, it can be something as simple as the person you care about saying, when I was a kid, I used to have this book and it was my favorite book, I don't know what happened to it. And you going onto Google and finding a copy and buying it for them so they have a copy for their bookshelf at home. A gift that really represents somebody's personal interests and shows that you've listened to them is gonna mean an awful lot to that person. And it's no wonder that people enjoy receiving love in that way and enjoy giving love in that way. I've mentioned on this channel before that I just love finding the perfect present for someone I really love. I just get a real buzz out of it. But again, we are talking about meaningful tokens of affection. This love language doesn't just mean extravagance. I've bought you all of these things to show I love you. Ooh, I'm practically going to need a new house to store all of this stuff. Oh, that's okay. I've bought you one of those too. I appear to have bookended this list with the two love languages most personal to me. So, number five is physical affection. I am a very touchy-feely person. I love physical closeness. I feel really comforted by cuddles or having my hand held or somebody putting their arm around me. That's just one of the biggest ways that I like to receive affection. And therefore, I also really like to give that back to the people that I love. I'm very huggy. I'm very keen on like snuggling up together to watch something on telly. I just like closeness. I was raised in quite a physically affectionate family. We were always giving cuddles and kisses and stuff. So I guess this was one of the first ways I learnt how to be given love and how to give love back. So it makes sense that it stayed with me my whole life. Some people are not into physical affection very much. And therefore, if this is your primary love language, you may find that there are times where you have to rein yourself in a bit. Hug me! <clears throat> Sorry, was that a bit much? 
Knowing what your own love language is can be really useful in working out what you need from the relationships in your life and why you may react negatively to certain situations that other people are fine with. But Gary Chapman actually says in his book that it's not just about you knowing what your primary love language is, but understanding the people in your lives' primary love language. I guess essentially the concept of love languages is really about making the people in your life feel as loved as they are. Because you could easily be in a situation where someone is offering to spend loads of time with you because that's how they show love and how they want to receive love, but you might be somebody who really craves physical affection and just because you're hanging out all the time, you're like, put your arm around me, hug me, hold my hand, oh my god, they don't love me. Understanding each other's love languages is supposed to stop that. So, now you've heard all five, what's your love language? Let me know in the comments, I'm very, very nosy. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. You can click on my floaty head if you'd like to subscribe. And last week's video is over there. I am gonna go and just, you know, maybe hug my mum. Cause that's how I show my love. Talk to you next week. Bye.